Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and we have joining us Hannah who is a U of A student in animal bi biology. This week we look at everything nature. Nesting season has started for a lot of birds and here we have a house sparrow gathering paper, possibly for a nest. Nesting can be difficult. This is a brown headed cowbird and it's a nest parasite because it lays eggs in the nests of other birds. Cuckoos do this too. Where there are chicks, there are predators and scavengers. This is a magpie. Magpies are scavengers. And here it is burying some food. It carefully picks up pieces of turf and places it on top. Apparently it wants to pick up a lot of pieces of turf. And is still putting turf. Wow, it really wants to make sure no one finds it. The loud chirping noises you hear in the background are house sparrows. Those sparrows sound really angry. Is that what I'm hearing? It's very possible. Magpies sometimes take chicks, so it's possible that the house sparrows are trying to drive it away. Red-winged blackbirds are back, and the females are nesting, and the males are singing, and I've seen them all over and heard them all over St. Albert. Red-winged blackbirds have a very distinctive call, and you can hear them all along the Sturgeon River and Big Lake and different places in St. Albert. We were out for a walk at Big Lake, and Hannah really wanted to take a video of this for Neighborhood Nature. This is a cloud of midges. You can see they're hovering above this rock. Midges often gather over distinctive parts of a landscape, for example, a rock or even a person. So if you're walking through a field and look up and notice a cloud of midges over your head, they're not necessarily trying to bite you. They might just be using you as a meeting place. You would likely notice a cloud of midges over your head, but here's something you might not notice. It's a wasp. Despite its small size, it actually is a wasp. Even very small wasps have to keep themselves clean. This one is cleaning its antennae. And like larger wasps, they run their antennae and their wings through their legs. This one has very, very long antennae. The wings are hard to see, but from a side view, they're visible. In case you're wondering, I'm in no danger of being stung, even though the wasp is on my finger. Many kinds of wasps only use their stinger for laying their eggs in the larvae of different kinds of insects, which is the case with this one. Here's another kind of bug that we spotted at Big Lake. It is a flat bug, and yes, it really is called a flat bug. This also really is a bug. Some kinds of insects are officially called bugs, and they have mouth parts like a drinking straw. If you've seen a stink bug before, which is also a bug, you might notice that this bug has a similar shape. A flat bug was something we did not expect to see at Big Lake, but this is something that we did expect to see. It's a muskrat. It might look a bit like a beaver, but it has a long skinny tail. In addition to going to Big Lake, we also went for a walk in the woods near our house, and we took the opportunity to try a nature app called Picture This, and it identifies plants. There's a lot of different plants that grow in this area, and we wanted to find out what some of them were. When you're out walking in your neighborhood, don't forget about plants. Our nature app identified this plant as a Western Canada violet. We looked it up in a field guide and learned that it grows in moist woods, which is where we found it. We also learned that it flowers from May to August. So now when we go for our walks, we'll know to keep an eye out for it. Being able to identify a plant can also tell you something about the conditions in the area where it's growing. For example, now we know if we see a Western Canada violet growing somewhere, we know the soil will probably be fairly moist. Here's something else that likes moist soil. It's a worm. Because of its size, we know that this worm would live in a deep burrow about a meter underground. Worms move like an accordion, like what you're seeing with this one. You can see how certain sections are contracted and held stable, while other sections extend and push out. Some of the footage that you see today was taken in the rain. Even if it's raining outside, there's still lots of nature to observe. So don't be afraid to go for a walk in the rain. You never know what you might see. Thanks for joining us at Neighborhood Nature this week, and we look forward to seeing you next week.